Hey everybody, my name is Artori Gold, and I'm doing another VOD review here on Ilios. In this game, I actually have two really well-known figures in the community. I have Seagull on Genji, and I also have Architect on my team, who is a DPS player for the San Francisco Shock. Um, so that's pretty exciting. I'm pretty excited uh, for this game. I'm going to go ahead and play Lucio on this map, which is kind of a really good pick this meta, especially on King of the Hill. I'm actually looking at Architect's profile here because I'm curious. He's actually been playing a lot of Reaper this season. From that, you can tell Reaper works really well with a Lucio, actually, and using the speed boost is really great for that. So we have kind of a standard Winston Diva tank composition, which is really good, as Lucio always speed out of the gate there. And basically my goal for this is to kind of stick with the Reaper as much as possible this game, right? Giving a speed boost for Reaper is actually insanely powerful, and it allows you to kind of compensate for the Reaper's weaknesses. The Reaper is very slow moving unless he uses his Wraith form. So here on the right side, I'm just trying to deny the enemy good positioning, right? We're kind of making him group up. We're now trying to switch over to the left side. Yeah, okay. So this was actually a really good shot by the Widowmaker. And this is something that you need to take in mind, and this was a mistake that I made. Whenever you play on this specific map, which is Ruins on Ilios, the Widowmaker is a very common pick, very good, lots of line of sight for him. So unfortunately, I died really early in that fight, and it really was kind of costly. So here we're just going to try to regroup. We lost the fight. We see on the enemy team, they have a very strange team comp. They get like triple DPS with a Brigitte on healer, which is actually kind of like half a DPS character. What's really good here is we're able to get the Pulse Bomb out of the way. Using a Pulse Bomb on a D.Va or a tank is never going to kill them, especially if you have heals on them. So that was really good of us. So we're going to engage. I'm going to try my best to try and boop the D.Va away. Because if the D.Va's defense matrixing my Reaper and other people, then his damage output is considerably lower. So I'm trying my best to get the D.Va off of my Reaper and give the Reaper the speed boost that he needs. This might be very winnable. I see my Widow really just pops off, so I want to get in here and heal them up as much as possible and then use my speed boost. I see that they're over by this environmental. Yeah, so that's a really good opportunity for me to just get a boop kill. If anybody is over in that area as Lucio, um, just in general, as Lucio... Okay, I'm going to rewind here because this is important to talk about. But I also wanted to say, uh, in general, in Lucio, you want to play around the environmental areas because it's very important that you get those boop kills on Lucio, especially Ilios. There's just so many opportunities to get kills like this. So in a moment like this, the Genji uses the blade, right? Now, the reason why this comes up because I'm over here and I have 98% to my ultimate. And I would have been able to have my beat if I didn't die first at that very beginning of the game where I got picked by Widow. That denied me ult charge, right? Because I got picked so early, I'm now missing 2% of my ult. I'm, I'm so close away from that. If I was just able to stay alive, be more careful and, you know, crossing a Widow's line of sight, which is something you should always do on this map like Ruins, then I would have had my beat and would have been able to prevent all the damage come out from the Genji Blade. So ultimately, tiny little mistakes that you do in the beginning of the game can end up affecting the game later on. This is another big reason why I think this happens to everybody. If you find yourself maybe being at 99% to an ult and you die before you get to use that ult off, you can pretty much attribute that also to how you played earlier. If you didn't play better earlier, then you did less damage, you did less healing, you died too early, which can mean that you just all around have less ult charge. So here I see we're initiating, and what I'm trying to do with this beat is get speed on my Reaper. Unfortunately, my Reaper is just getting so much focus from this D.Va. I'm trying my best to boop D.Va and boop Brigitte away from Reaper. That's like the entire point of my existence in this game. To try and create space for my Reaper so he doesn't get defense matrixed and he doesn't get stunned by Brigitte. Unfortunately, my Reaper is having a really rough game. The D.Va is just all over him with defense matrix and the Brigitte is doing um, a lot of damage with the, well, you know... It's Brigitte. She does a lot of damage, but she also has that stun. And the reason why that stun is so good against Reaper 2 is because it's really easy for her to just walk up and interrupt him during his, uh, his Death Blossom, his ultimate. So all around, we lost that first round. It was a pretty rough one. I was thinking about swapping here, but then I noticed that our Widowmaker actually swapped to Brigitte. So if you're running a Brigitte and a Lucio, then that's pretty slow heals. 
But because we have a Moira to compensate for that, we have the speed boost from Lucia, which is good for the Reaper and the Brigitta to help them initiate. So I'm just trying to boop them, trying to zone them away. It's an even fight so far. My Brigitta actually overextended way too much. I'm going to rewind so we can watch this to see exactly what she did wrong here. So as we initiate, Brigitta gets really aggressive. Which in turn is a problem because we don't have a main tank actually. If you notice, if you notice here, we're running a Zarya and Diva, right? If we had a Reinhardt here, then pushing on the front line and getting aggressive with the Brigitta is good. But since we don't have that main tank, then both of our alt tanks here, see they're going to just play really slow and really passive. She's trying to get some energy charge. And here's where she really just messes up. She just goes right in there, right? And as a Brigitta... You should never extend to this kind of point in the game. Like, look, if you're over here and your off tanks are both back here, this is not where you want to be. You can't be here as Brigitta. You just don't have the health pool to survive that. Even with a Moira who's healing you, it's just not going to make up for the damage. Because your health pool is too low. So as a Brigitta, as good as it is to go in there and use a shield bash, you don't want to use it aggressively like that all the time. Sometimes it's better to just, you know, wait and use it for a good moment as opposed to waiting to just use it aggressively and just have maximum usage of the ability. Although as strong as the ability is, using it all the time isn't what you want to do. You want to try and use that ability on certain characters and you want to try to use it to save your allies from dives. And if you use it too aggressively all the time, it'll cause you to overextend. Luckily we get a really early grab. Like I'm really excited about this grab actually. It was so early, it was really good. And we're able to do a lot of damage. And something you want to do as Lucio. See how I'm going to... Okay, so I'm going to rewind here. Show you what... This is something you should do as Lucio almost every time. When you're playing Lucio, your boop is a really effective tool for environmental kills and things like that. But it's also really good to disrupt enemies. So what you like want to do as, as Lucio, you want to get behind them. Notice how I get behind them right here. And I can boop them into the Reaper. So... If you're playing with a Reaper especially, speeding boosting him into the to the kill zone is what you want to do. But if you're able to boop the enemies into the Reaper, that also saves the Reaper the extra effort he has to go to to try and kill the enemies as well. So we didn't have the damage for the Graviton. We did, we, as you can see, the Brig survived. The Brig survived it, and so did the uh, Diva. But because I'm able to boop them into our team. We're able to clean it up really nicely. I do the same thing here. I try to get the Tracer too successfully, and then the Reaper just really pops off right there. So one of the really important things you can do as a Lucio is, like, it's really nice to get environmental kill as Lucio. But you can disrupt the enemies and push them into positions where they don't want to be. And typically that means you want to boop them from behind into your team. One other good thing about Lucio is your speed boost. So I see this, right? Using your speed boost to run away and then heal after you escape is, is usually better. That every single time, you just get out of there, and then you can heal up later. Usually, it's better to speed boost first, and then heal after you escaped. Yeah, so as I say here in the game clip myself, um, there was a Genji who was looking for kills. I was doing my best to juke him. When you're with a Genji, if a Genji's trying to blade you, a good thing that you can do, it doesn't always work, but it usually wastes a lot of his time, just hide around corners. Notice if I'm just playing around this corner, I'm able to boot people coming for me. So I just wall ride this corner, and it's really difficult for the Genji, because if he tries to dash on me, I just go around another angle, right? Unfortunately, they had a Doomfist and a High Noon, they had a lot of things that were there. But look at this, I wasted pretty much the entire Genji blade. He's down to one second when he gets one kill on me and Lucio, and that's probably the best case scenario. The only other thing that could have been better there is if I got my ult charge. As you can see, I'm really close to my ult. I was at 95% of my ult, I think, by the time I killed him. So here, this is a great spot for Lucio. I want to go for those boops if you can, if they're in that position. But you don't want to camp that spot, you know? It's better to help your team than to just stay on an edge waiting for someone to come to that spot so you can get that play of the game boop kill. Help your team first, concentrate on speed boosting them, um, especially if you're running a 3 support team comp like, like we are right now. You don't really have to worry about healing as much, you kind of want to stay on speed most of the time. I think right here, um, we're kind of hurting a little bit because our team comp doesn't really have a main tank. But the enemy team, I think they also aren't running, uh, I think they're running triple DPS as opposed to... Um, the same. So it's kind of awkward team comps on both sides. So I'm going to probably drop a beat early here. Just so we can take the point back. Yeah, so I really wanted to help my, sea my seagull there. 
D.Va on Seagull. I really wanted to help him. So I'm trying to roll wall ride and try to boop the Brigida. So one thing that Brigida struggles with is connecting and initiating on people because she isn't really a fast character, right? So as Lucio, it's one of your jobs to just boop her around as much as possible. And that's what I've done. I think I've booped the, the Brigitte about three or four times there. And we actually got the point from them, but we lost the fight. So here I'm just going to speed boost and regroup. I'm going to try to get my team together and taxi service them because we have time for maybe like another fight or two. Probably two fights still. But when you get a Brigitte on the enemy team, it's definitely up to you as Lucio to boop her away from your team as much as possible. If uh, she goes in for that bash, it's really easy to tell what a Brigitte wants to do. You can really predict it. It's not difficult. She wants to bash. She wants to do that 150 damage combo every single time. So it's up to you to just boop her away. Just like that. Her effectiveness is really taken down a lot. You're not going to kill the Brigitte. But you are going to make sure she's not able to do what she wants to do. Which is just, you know, hit on people with our flail. Unfortunately, we, uh, we lost that fight. I think our backline got dove. I was... Trying to help get that uh, Reaper and Brigitte away from our team, but or help our Reaper get into the enemy team while we are, are uh, keeping the Brigitte away. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out for us that well. I also noticed that they have a Widowmaker right now. We don't really have too much to contest the Widowmaker. We have a Diva, which is good, but this is our last fight, so we really need to try and use everything we have here. So we're going to go uh, group up here and do another big spe speed boost. I think I always use your voice comms when you use speed boost, by the way, because it helps your team so much. Being able to know when to go in. So now we're fighting on point. I'm going to use my... Just try to stay alive. This is all you want to do. When you're close to your ult, then use your ult. You want to stay alive if you're close to your ult there. I got a little bit out of position. I should have been able to boop kill that D.Va, but that's okay. We cleaned up really nicely here. So now this Genji tries to blade, but it's really just a desperation. It was really good teamwork by us. Our Reaper did really well. A Reaper was able to engage. I was able to be as annoying as possible. Lucio's really good at being annoying on a point. So here, we got some swaps. On this point on well, you usually want to run an Orisa, because Orisa is really hard to get off the point. Unfortunately, we're running the Winston Diva. It's not as good on this map. So here's a good way and a good strategy to try to go for a boop kill. This is a good, easy rollout that every Lucio should try to do. It also allows you to scout for the enemy to see what kind of composition they have. Unfortunately, our Winston really... My Winston was overextending way too much here. So as we see, I have our whole team pretty much over here, right? We got three members over here, and then I'm over here. So that means there's two people over here, right? They're on the left, which is really just overextending. So I'm going to try to transition myself over here to the right. Okay, so this is something you should never do. You should never be over here. This is just, you're overextending. It's, nobody's with you. All of our team, we have like four people over in this area. So as Winston, you should always remember where your team is. I know you kind of, like, as a main tank, it's very hard to remember, like, where everybody is at all times. But you really, at the beginning of a game, when the control point hasn't even unlocked yet, right? You can't really be that aggressive. You gotta be a little bit, you gotta play it a little bit slower. If you just dive in there, as Winston, you have more mobility than almost any other hero, right? You have that big leap. So you want to try to play it a little more safe. You don't want to just use your mobility, your leap, and run into all six people. Because it's obvious, like, that's where the enemy team's gonna come from every single time. So if you just leap in there, you're gonna leap into six people, and your team isn't fast enough to be with you. So because of that, we start off the fight with a pretty big disadvantage. Our main tank is dead. Um, and here they have the point. So at this point, I see everybody's kind of low. I'm going to try to just get everybody out. So I'm going to use my heal boost and speed. And I'm just going to boop the Brigitte away. Make sure we can get everybody healed up. Unfortunately, my Reaper was flanking on the right side where the mini pack is. Architect on Reaper actually tries the same flank route, I think, three or four times in this game. And he dies almost every other time. And it just comes to the point where he's just so predictable. Like, if you try the same flank route over and over and over again, then it's gonna just not work out for you. The enemy team's gonna start expecting you to go that way, and the flank route's just not gonna work out how you want it to. So my beat there was just... In I heard the Dragon Blade, which is the big reason why I did it. 
and luckily I was able to save my Moira, my main healer. So now we're able to re-engage. We get a nice pick on both of their tanks. So right now that they're down their tanks, we can be really aggressive here. I'm going to try to boop the Brigitte off the point. Just so we can bully her and push her back. Booping away any of them when you're at an advantage. You're able to, to make sure that you get the point if you do that. Because the enemy team is nothing but squishies. And we still have main healer, main tanks. So I can just dis I can just push them away from the point. And I'm going to try to retreat here. Try to get some boot kills. That didn't get them, unfortunately. And here's another another moment I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about. Is the Reaper tried the same flank route again. So this is the second time... Not only that, this is the second time my Winston was overextended. So here we see that Reaper is trying to go in this mini health pack room and push into this mini health pack room. So we can come up behind the enemy and shoot them. The problem is, is this is the second time he's done that and they're kind of expecting it. And they have a McCree, which means that McCree's flashbang is going to stop you every time. Especially if he's able to just get you before you can wraith or wait until your wraith is done and then flashbang you. The, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill and you also have the Brigitte with the stun so they're very good at protecting themselves from these kind of flanks they have a team comp that is kind of anti-flank with double stun double stun really it messes you up and another problem here is that my Winston just he keeps overextending and alone nobody's over here with him and yet he's diving into the enemy team at this point the enemy team's a full six they haven't lost anybody they haven't done anything they're just regrouping so diving as a Winston like this is not what you want to do. It'll just get you out of position and you have too much damage coming in because they're all six. And see right there, the enemy Winston does the same exact mistake. So he's trying to create space. I mean, I do understand from his point of view, we just lost two. And especially if you lose a Reaper, that's really good. That means Winston's able to dive. But what we still have alive is three supports. So there's no way Winston's going to be able to kill a Moira, especially when Moira can heal herself and fade away, and I'm on top of her being able to, to heal as well. So Winston kind of overextends here. He tries to retreat in a weird angle, but in the end he just ends up going down so quickly because D.Va actually does so much damage. And here I'm trying to get the Hanzo away. I want to make sure the Hanzo doesn't, you know, land Stormbow on people. I'm trying to boop him into that well. But it looks like the fight's lost, and I recognize that the fight's lost. You know, our whole team's dead. So I'm just going to speed boost and retreat out of there. It's more important to just retreat in situations like that than to just die on the point as Lucio. Because you're so quick, you can just escape. And if you escape without taking damage or dying, then you're able to just deny the enemy extra ult charge, which, which they would have otherwise have gotten. So as Lucio, always make sure to run away when you can. If, if the fight looks like it's lost, just run away. Fight another day and deny the enemy extra ult charge. So here I'm going to speed boost in. We get a nice pick on the Brigitte at the beginning. Notice that we actually don't have a main tank anymore. Something that um, something that you might have noticed if I retreat. Or... Yeah, if I rewind here, you'll notice that our Ana. Well, the guy's name is Ana anyways. He's, he decided to swap off for Winston for whatever reason. So now we're down a main tank. So in a situation where we actually have the advantage and it's 5v6, what we should be doing right here, and this is what we're not able to do because we're down, we're down a main tank, we're all split up. We're all down here. We got one here, we got one here, and then the rest of the team is over here, right? Now, we got a pick. So we want to be able to push into the enemy team, but we don't have a main tank to initiate that dive. And because of that, it's it's kind of a problem for us because we have the advantage, but we're not able to apply the advantage. Um, and something else you'll notice here is that Architect the Reaper decides again to go do the mini, mini health pack flank thing. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't really work out for him, but I don't, I'm not really sure. He, it's just too predictable. You should really avoid doing the same thing over and over again. Um, it looks like the... the, the Tracer actually went in and followed. You can see right here the the Tracer went in first actually. So if you look over to the right you'll notice that what was happening here is the Tracer decided to push into this mini health pack room because as Tracer that's usually what you want to do. You want to flank but the McCree was probably just sitting here crouched and waiting right? The McCree is probably just sitting here crouched and, wait and waiting. This is my McCree, by the way. What am I doing? I shouldn't be doing this. 
So because our Reaper has been flanking on this part of the map pretty much the entire game, he's this McCree is just going to probably be crouched, waiting around in a corner somewhere, and then flashbang and right-click or headshot and kill you as soon as you enter the door. And Tracer was unaware of this because he was playing main tank the whole game. So if you do the same flank route, the, the whole game, the enemy team's just gonna wait for you and expect you and then punish you for it. So you gotta make sure to change things up. If you're flanking, don't take the same route. Luckily is able to uh, get some nice kills here with his ult. Uh, probably thanks to the tracer because the tracer uh, was able to be a good distraction. But we're still unable to push the front line because we're down our reaper now and our diva just gets melted. And unfortunately falls down the well too. That's really unlucky. So here I'm trying to boop, trying to get him into the Moira and get the, them out of the Arista Shield. So I want the Moira ult to hit them as well as possible here. I'm going to drop the beat because it's 99% overtime and, we're, and it looks like we're just losing the fight. And I need to make sure everybody stays alive. I'm going to apply my speed boost. Uh, one thing you should always do is if you're about to drop a beat, always use speed boost so you can escape. It's much better because you're not going to die with your beat on. It looks like we're going to just ultimately lose this point though. It's really unlucky, but we are trying to apply as much pressure as we can. I'm trying to disrupt the Arissa, but as you can tell, she just has so much weight onto her. It's just impossible to move her into the well, especially with that fortify ability. So ultimately we lost this game and there's a few things to take away from it. The first thing is don't take the same flank routes all the time. If you keep using the same flank route, the enemy is going to expect you to come that way and you'll get punished pretty heavily for it. And the second one is you got to make sure that you're able to initiate. If you don't have that main tank high health target on your team and you're running a triple DPS comp with one off tank like we were, then it's going to be really tough to initiate. Anyways, that's it from this game. I hope you guys have learned something and thanks for watching.